friends. I just want to thank you for uh, tuning in to Light Metaphors. I'm Thomas Schwabe. Thanks for uh, subscribing. And, <clears throat> uh, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, um, hit that subscribe button and uh, turn on your uh, notification bell as I uh, uh, keep releasing at least uh, uh, a couple things every week. And, um, you know, I'm just, uh, uh, God's just really flooded my heart with things. And, and, I, and it's like I want to, out of the abundance of my heart, I want to just release those things. And one of the things that I've been really uh, thinking a lot upon is um, this scripture in Colossians. And so I want to share a little bit of that today regarding that. Um, it's in Colossians 2, verse 18 and 19. Colossians 2, 18 and 19. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. Um, take care that no one keeps defrauding you of your prize by delighting in false humility and the worship of the angels, taking his stand on visions he has seen inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. Inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. You know, we're in a generation where there's a lot of uh, things going on in the supernatural, uh, many things genuine, but then there's many things that are fluff, if you will. They're coming from a fleshly mind. They're unspiritual, but uh, being uh, presented as spiritual, as visions from God or prophetic words from God. And, you know, we do not want to despise prophecies and despising prophecies, but uh, um, we don't want to uh, suppress or push those things down. But I like Larry Randolph's definition of uh, prophecy. It's the uh, it's the ability the, to uh, verbalize the thought and intent of God. That's the prophetic. It's the ability to verbalize the thought and intent of God. You know, we're all his sheep, so we all can hear God's voice. My sheep know my voice. And this comes through a place of intimacy. You spend time with the shepherd and you become aware of the voice of the shepherd. And it's a spiritual voice. His voice is spirit. His word is spirit. His word is life. And, and we, we come to know uh, the voice of the Lord by the Spirit, by intimacy, by being around Him. And, and God wants us all to be able to hear. And that is the true prophetic. The true prophetic is uh, the ability to hear and uh, verbalize God's thoughts and intents, to receive God's voice, to become aware of it. And it comes all through a connection with Him. It comes through a place of intimacy with Him. And there's a true fruit that comes as a result of true prophetic and true visions from God. And, and um, you know, Paul talked here about, he mentioned a, a couple things I want to bring out. And um, one of the things he talked about is these people that are uh, in this unspiritual mindset and that are puffed up, the fruit of pride, they're one of the things they will talk about a lot is the uh, angels in such a way that it's like almost worshiping angels. You know, I like what my friend Jeremy Nelson has said, you know, it's it's, uh, it's uh, foolish to ignore the existence of angels, but, uh, but it's, um, it's even more foolish to worship angels. You know, it's foolish to be worshiping angels, but it's even, it's even foolish to ignore the existence of them. Now, God brings angels, and he, he, there are angels in our midst. That's just a reality. But when a person goes into the worshiping, uh, worshiping of angels, it's bad fruit. It's a sign that this person, Paul says, it's key word, he has lost connection with the head. And it's all about connection with the head, friends. That's the key thing is staying in union with the word himself, staying in relationship with the word. They go into... Uh, uh, visions that their natural carnal mind has seen. They, they're puffed up by these visions. You know, that's another key thing is that, you know, the supernatural, the supernatural encounters, people talk about the encounters and this and that. I do that. But these type of encounters, if they lead you and drift you away from the most important thing, that is your sincere and pure devotion to Jesus. We need to check the fruit of our visions, the fruit of the supernatural going on in our life. Does it cause us to be hungry for the Lord? You know, Paul exhorts us, eagerly desire spiritual things. Paul's the one who exhorted us, set your mind on things above, heavenly things. 
eagerly desire spiritual things, especially that you might prophesy because there's something about the true prophetic is motivated by love. And guess who love is? It's God. God initiates these things. God propels us. God blows on us and we get hit. We get impressed. We get a vision and a picture and we bring it forth and it produces the fruit of encouragement, exhortation and comfort in people's lives. And it's it's, it's evident that God spoke to them, and it's evident that God uh, is, is in their midst, and, and it's motivated by Him. It's not motivated by a, an unspiritual mind uh, uh, coming up with visions that, have not, that, do, that do not have their source truly in the Spirit of God, in the Lord. You know, and, and these visions may come in the mind, but they're not truly from the Lord. You know, the imagination can get visions and pictures and we need to be discerning as to the source of these things and and judge and weigh these things. See, that's why it's so important to have a foundation in the Word of God. You know, I teach from the Word of God because I love the Word of God. I've meditated and chewed on it for many, many years. God gave me a great hunger for the Word to store it up in my heart, to allow it to abide in me richly, bountifully uh, within. And as I always quote Bobby Connor. Um, you know, we need to let the word of Christ be packed, the word of God be packed up in our hearts. We need to let the word be packed up in our hearts. Like he's, he's, um, he's taking from what Paul exhorted us all to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, abundantly, and bountifully because there's a safeguard there. It's a plumb line. We need to have the word and the spirit, friends. The word and the spirit is so important. Like I've been sharing on the word of God on my series uh, seven part series, the word of God, its functions and activities. You know, we need to have the word and the spirit. If you have the word and the spirit, you'll grow up. But if you have the word only, uh, you'll dry up. Or, or if you have the spirit only, you'll blow up. But if you have the word and the spirit, you'll grow up. But also if you just have the spirit only, you be, be careful. You may just be led astray and deceived. Dece- you can go into a place of deception. I've known anointed people started off very uh, with a uh, out of a place of intimacy with God and, and substance and anointing and tangible presence of Jesus and a love for Jesus, but it, slowly they drifted away, drifted into spiritual things in such a way that it, it began to overshadow the person of Jesus. That they drifted away from the person of Jesus. They drifted away from the most important thing, the doorway himself, the gate himself. They were disconnected from the head. They lost connection with the head. As Paul says in the next verse, uh, Colossians 2.19. Colossians 2.19. And not holding firmly to the head from whom the entire body being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments grows with a growth which is from God which is a growth, which is from God. God is the initiator. He is the one that causes things to grow. He is the one that causes true visions to come. He's the one that causes uh, uh, true growth uh, to, to uh, happen within us as a result of an encounter with Him, as a result of His process within us, as a result of His working within us. And that's key because it has to be initiated from Him. The wind blows on us and our hearts are open to receive the impression, the, 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 the thought of God, the vision of God, the image of God, or even as we sleep, the dreams of God. But it will cause us to come into a place of union with Him, staying in connected connection with him it will cause us to to uh, abide in him you know jesus said that uh, he talked about abiding in him and letting his word abide in us he says if you abide in me and my word abides in you those are the two things he says he didn't make it complicated it's not all about this deep mystical uh, uh, stuff where you have to know all the deep secrets to get to this certain level and this is, that's all baloney. That's coming from that unspiritual mind that has lost connection with the head and is more into the spiritual laws and principles and the, the, the deep secrets of the realms of heaven and this and that. It's all about Jesus. He is the ladder. He is the doorway. He is the gate. He is in him the heavens dwell and exist. All of them. It's all about him. He is omnipresent. 
He's all around and as, at the same time, he's within us. And we don't, wanna, we don't wanna get into a place where we lose connection with the, uh, the head. It, uh, we, we lose, we stop holding fast to the head. He has lost connection to the head from whom the whole body supported and knit together by its joints and ligaments grows as God, God causes it to grow. So the Lord will cause things to grow. He's the one who causes things to grow. He's the one that desires us to stay in connection with Him. And you know, when, when I talk about Him as well, we're, we are also talking about the body because we are all one. He is in us all. He's revealed in us all and through us all. And so we stay in connection and, and, and as, as we stay in connection, we receive from that which every joint supplies of Him. It's Him in the joints. It's Him in the, the parts of the body flowing and giving, imparting something of Himself that gives life. And so Paul talked about not getting led astray by, uh, and having uh, your, your, yourself get into a place of deception where you're led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And, you know, it's very easy in our time and age to, to uh, hear about the supernatural and the spiritual things and, and get so excited and go to these groups and stuff that talk about the supernatural, the spiritual things, and, um, uh, you know, deep mysteries and mystical things. But it's because we all have a hunger for that. That's we were born in the spirit. We are born. Heaven is our home. We are born there. We're born from above. And, and we want to be familiar with the realm of the kingdom, the realm of the unseen. But without Jesus, who is the hub, the centrality, without him revealing these things, without him staying in connection with him, we're easily led astray. And to see that we can easily go to these things and, and, and get hungry and, and get, allow that spirit, that antichrist spirit to drift us into this, bring us into deception. You know, the antichrist is, it speaks of the anti-anointing. You know, Christ is, speaks of the anointing. Antichrist is anti-anointing. And someone could be releasing uh, or the anti-anointing spirit can actually be flowing through a person. And you know, the fruit of that is that it leads people astray from their sincere and pure devotion to Jesus. It leads them in all these different mystical pathways and this and that. It leads them away from, let me judge just by the word of God. Let me test all things. Let me try these things. Let me see the fruit. Let me see what the word of God says. I love people that who have encounters with God and then they ask the Lord, Lord, show me something. Show me where that is in the scripture. Show me, uh, reveal to me uh, something about that, what I just went through in the scripture. And God shows them because he confirms his, he confirms what he does through his word. He establishes things and then he confirm, conf, confirms it in his word. You know, the anti-Christ spirit or the anti-anointing spirit is a spirit that is, comes against the anointing. You know why? John said, the anointing teaches you all things. You have no need of man to teach you, but just as in his anointing teaches you all things and, and, and is true and is not counterfeit, just as it has taught you abide in him. That's in 1 John. You know, the true anointing if someone is flowing in the true anointing, it, Paul's not, uh, uh, or John's not saying you don't need a, no one to teach you in the sense of, I don't need you. I don't need to receive from you. I don't need to receive from that. I know all things. No, he's saying that, you know, you have the anointing within you teaches you all things. And that same anointing that is in you is also in many, every single member of the body as well. And it can speak through those members as well. It can teach you through those members as well. The anointing is what you're listening to. You do not need any man to teach you, but as just as his anointing teaches you about all things and is in you, it's in all, uh, you recognize they are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. You are from God friends and whoever knows God listens to God, listens to you. Whoever does not know God will not listen to you. In other words, those who are in union and relationship with the Spirit through the anointing, they will recognize the Spirit of God. They will recognize the anointing of God in, the, in, in another. And they'll listen to this anointing. They'll receive from the anointing. God wants to teach us all things. He wants to reveal these things to us by the Spirit. 
He wants us to, to listen to the anointing. Yes, and, and, and as a result, the fruit of the anointing will, it teaches us to abide in Him. But just as His anointing is true and not counterfeit, it teaches us to abide in Jesus. So the true anointing is going to keep us in that connection and union with the head. It's not going to lead us into some supernatural things and, and uh, mystical things that's going to bring us away from that pure and sincere devotion to Jesus. That's going to drift us, cause us to be drift away into deception. No, the true anointing of God is going to teach us to abide in Jesus. It's going to bring, woo us and bring us into a place of deeper intimacy and relationship with Jesus. If it doesn't do that, it's an anti-Christ spirit. It's an anti-anointing spirit. It's doing, the, it's opposition, is in opposition to the true anointing. It's diametrically opposed to the function and flow and fruit of the true anointing, which is to produce a greater hunger and, and intimacy and desire for Jesus. And to know the Lord and to know his ways and to be open to whatever he, the door, wants to take you into. Initiate in and through your life. Because he does want to bring us into, Paul said, now I will go into visions and revelations of Jesus Christ. <laughs> visions and revelations of Jesus Christ. So he wants us to go into visions and revelations of Jesus Christ. God wants us to bring us into visions, true visions that are not coming from an unspiritual mind that, uh, uh, in which uh, pride comes, but true visions that bring a humility. You know, it was key. Paul said after all those things, he had in great and intense revelations, exceedingly great revelations. There was a thorn in my flesh. He had a fruit of humility in his life. There was the fruit of humility that was a key mark on his life as a result of, of, of true uh, spiritual experiences. True spiritual experiences will produce a key uh, mark on your life, and that's humility. They won't bring you into a puffed up mind and pride where you lose connection with Jesus the head, and all you talk about is the supernatural encounters and spiritual things where, where Jesus becomes less and that becomes more. Oh, God, help us. Help us. We're in a time and age where that is readily embraced, the supernatural. And, and God, the, again, Paul says, eagerly desires spiritual things, especially that you might prophesy because the true spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus and it brings edification, exhortation, and comfort. It doesn't exalt the person, exalts Jesus, it points to Jesus, it testifies about Jesus, and what Jesus has said, and it's confirmed in the word of God, confirmed in your heart because Jesus spoke it to you. You know, that's the true spiritual uh, realm, the prophetic, uh, is, is, is that testimony of Jesus. Never let it, never draws you away from Jesus. We got to be a people that just are, are wise and discerning from the Lord, are not uh, ignorant of, of Satan's uh, schemes to lead us astray and, and to lead us into deception and, and away from intimacy with Jesus. You know, I, I remember one time John Paul Jackson, I was in a, a house with, with him and some other uh, friends, and, uh, and I asked him a question about certain people who teach about ascending into the throne room and, and through their imagination and ascending and going to heaven and this and that. And, and Paul, John Paul, uh, you know, he mentioned, you know, that... He, you know, he, he doesn't know where these people are actually really going in their imagination. They can be uh, saying they went to the throne room, but there is a key, like I shared earlier, there's a mark to, to, of, uh, on those who have truly encountered the throne room or have truly walked in the realm of, of heaven with the Lord. And John Paul said that there's that mark that is left on them that those who have truly gone there can see it on another person. And that's, it's, the, it's the mark of humility. It's the mark of humility, and that's key, you know. Those kind of uh, encounters, those true encounters will not leave a man puffed up in their minds and going, continually going on in the next vision they had and the next prophetic uh, uh, prophecy they've had. No, it, it leaves a humility on them where they walk with the Lord and they stay in connection with the head and they, they, they uh, exalt the Lord above all things. And it's so important because we're in, a, again, an a age where a lot of that is flowing. That antichrist spirit is flowing. That 
spirit that uh, a diametrically opposed uh, uh, is in diam uh, is diametrically opposed to intimacy, simplicity, and devotion to the person of Jesus Christ. But it brings you into a place of exalting other things above Him, the worshiping of angels, talking about angels and the supernatural, and and talking about visions and things more than Jesus in such a way that it actually puffs, it, it's actually coming, it's the fruit of, of an unspiritual mind, a mind that's been deceived, a mind that has lost connection, a heart that has lost connection with Jesus and produces the fruit of pride. Lord, have mercy upon us. Make us wise and discerning. Make us a people of the Word of God and the Spirit. May we be a people of the Word and the Spirit. Uh, may we uh, not lose connection with you. May we stay in that place of the simplicity of, of uh, devotion to you, staying like little children, staying like little children so that we may truly see and enter the realm of the kingdom, the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you would bless us with that uh, hunger and thirst to know you and to be uh, with you and to walk with you and to allow you to lead us wherever you want us to go, to bring us into uh, visions and revelations of you, supernatural, true supernatural encounters that are initiated and are caused by you. May God bless you, friends, and may your eyes be illuminated in such a way, filled with revelation in such a way that you know Jesus better. God bless you. Thanks for checking out Light Metaphors. Um, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for subscribing if you have. God bless you. Thanks for sowing into uh, my life even as I sow into your life. Thanks.